Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa Marquette here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families at Syracuse University. This is What's Brewing. Today, we have Chris Newsom, who's an Army veteran and the Senior Vice President at Recruit Military here today to tell us about his organization. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Thanks for having me today, Vanessa. Yeah. So do you want to start off by telling us about your military experience and what you do now at Recruit Military? Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, so I served with the United States Army with the 82nd Airborne as a super duper paratrooper. Uh, loved my time in uniform. I did a short stint. I did, I did an initial enlistment contract, if you will. So I served from 2002 to 2006. During that time, uh, deployed multiple times as everybody was during that timeline. So um, had a tour to Afghanistan, two tours to Iraq. By the time uh, all was said and done and I started transitioning, I was um, a junior non-commissioned officer, E5 sergeant, ripe old age of 22, 23, ready to uh, attack the big brave world. So I went through my transition at Bragg, 06. And, um, you know, when I initially went through the transition, I, I did a lot of what most of our peers do, um, you know, kind of stumble trying to find your next path, you know, especially on the more junior side there. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I didn't really know how to translate some of my skill sets. So I, you know, I found myself taking some random jobs as I uh, began to enroll in school, pursue higher education to make myself a little more marketable. And as fate would have it, uh, around my junior, senior year of college, I was introduced to recruit military who again, by nothing more than fate, uh, happened to be pretty much in my backyard. It was 30 minutes up the road, our, our brick and mortars headquarters here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I had a couple buddies that were working there and they said, you really got to come and check out the mission. And after learning about the organization, I would have you know, happily been the custodian. I would have done anything uh, just to be a <laughs> part of what we do here because um, it's, it's the closest thing that I've found to serving without you know, actually re-enlisting and, and putting the uniform back on. So I look at this as kind of an extension of, uh, of my service, and I know a lot of my colleagues do as well. So um, I've done a lot of different things at Recruit Military, worn different hats, trying to find where I fit the best. But uh, where you know the last 10 years has taken me to where I am today is managing our Department of Defense programs and our aggregation strategy. And I know that's a bunch of words that not everybody really necessarily understands, but essentially um, my team's primary responsibility is to ensure that as many men and women from the military community, whether it's active duty, guard, reserve, um, you know, anybody that's, that simply has veteran status, they wore the uniform at one time, and military family members are aware of what we're doing, of the programs that we bring um, to ensure that we can get them connected with the employers uh, that, that want to hire and retain them. So, uh, really, our mission is to bring in these men and women, make sure that they've got professional profiles, resumes ready to uh, to start that professional networking. And, you know, there's there's a dotted line to working uh, with the Department of Defense and the federal government. You know, we have a contract with the United States Army and the, the Department of Labor. But, um, yeah, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. So making sure that our uh, our name and our mission is out there as far and wide as possible. Yeah, and we appreciate all you guys do to help our veteran service members and military families getting jobs. Yeah, um, well, likewise. Oh, thank you. Uh, so we know how important job boards, career fairs, placement services are for veterans and military spouses as they learn to translate their skills when they transition to civilian life. Can you tell us how Recruit Military works to ensure this and help them through the process? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think the theme in all of this is that there is not a one size fits all solution, you know, very much like the way that the military operates. Everybody's got a role. There's there's, you know, a different fashion and function, depending on what you're trying to do. We understand that um, a job board is not necessarily always going to be the smoking gun uh, as far as mm -hmm. somebody's, you know, career success. It tends to be a launch pad for many people. Um, you know, what, what I think a lot of folks don't understand is that in today's world, you know, living, living in 2021, um, most organizations, and I say most like 99% of them are using applicant tracking systems. And an applicant tracking system is multifaceted in that it can, uh, you know, it serves as a platform for organizations to categorically store incoming talent so that they understand 
how to orient them towards the hiring manager or for the next steps in the hiring process. It also helps them scan resumes in some cases to, uh, you know, to cherry pick those keywords to identify where an applicant's going to be the best fit. And mm -hmm. none of that really starts until a candidate has submitted an online application. You know, even for, for more of the senior positions in many cases, you know, you're going for director level, VP level, you still need to submit an initial online application so that you get into their ATS. Um, so I think, you know, job boards are always going to be important because that's a starting point for many people. Um, but, you know, I, what we pride ourselves in being able to do is marry all of the different, um, you know, the, the different connection verticals, if you will, to try to ensure that everybody um, gets, a, gets a solid shot at finding what's going to fit them the best as it relates to getting them connected with the right organization and the right opportunity. So in some cases, it is the job board, it's a job posting, it's, uh, you know, it's that application, it's, it's getting that resume squared away. In other cases, it's, you know, being at a career fair, being able to shake hands, be in front of people, um, you know, we're in a COVID environment right now. So we also have mm -hmm. virtual events to ensure that we can cover down on those physical gaps. Um, and then placement services, you know, that's more of the niche side of, of the recruiting, uh, you know, arm that we have where the organization will come to us with a very, very specific need and essentially say, we can't find this particular individual at a career fair or on a job board as of yet, you know, very elusive. So that's where our recruiting team goes to work and, um, and leverages not only our own job board and proprietary platforms, but also goes out there to their own networks uh, to, to ensure that we can find an A plus candidate or a series of A plus candidates to submit for consideration. So, you know, it's usually one of those three verticals, but in some cases it's a culmination of all of them, you know, by virtue of coming into Recruit Military's ecosystem via our job board, it gives you access to all of those things. It gives you access to not just the hundreds of thousands of, you know, open opportunities that are out there from companies specifically looking for military talent, but it also plugs you into our event management system so that we can acknowledge where you are, send you recommendations for upcoming events, virtual, physical, um, and then, you know, your professional profile and resume are in there as well. And that uh, triggers our recruiters when they have a job requisition where, you know, you might be the right fit, again, using those, those key words, pulling from the resume and profile, and we can place you directly. So sometimes it's a combination of them. Sometimes it's, it's, it's just one in of itself. But, um, you know, we, we focus primarily on those three verticals. And then there's a lot of preparation materials that are kind of tucked in between within this process. You know, we work with ACP. So if somebody needs a mentor, we make sure that they get introduced to mentorship very early on. Um, so if they're, you know, nearing their ETS window, they have six months or they have a year and they have some prep work ahead of them, that they're getting connected with an industry expert so that when the time does come to actually, you know, begin to interview or to start applying to positions, they're, they're very well prepared. Yeah, so it sounds like whether you're part of one of it or all of it, um, whether it's the job boards, career fairs and such, you are, they're all great opportunities. So definitely right. worth taking advantage of. Uh, so where are these located and how can somebody get started using Recruit Military? Yeah, great question. Um, it's it's very easy. You know, again, we're in 2021. So everything, you know, starts <laughs> online for the most part. So if you go to recruitmilitary.com, um, there's basically a fork in the road because, again, we work with thousands and thousands of employers. We want to steward them as well. You know, we, we try to take care of both parties so that they have that happy meeting in the middle. But either can go to recruitmilitary.com and as a job seeker, you're basically going to be asked at the very beginning of the process, are you an employer? Or are you a job seeker? When you follow that job seeker path, it's going to push you down uh, a lane that will, you know, start to ask you some of those hard hitting questions, you know, military specific in some cases, rank, MOS, you know, security clearances, ETS date, um, that sort of thing. And then there's a lot of, you know, more I guess, quote unquote, civilian questions as well, you know, uh, mm -hmm. work history, education, preferences, are you willing to relocate, compensation needs, that sort of thing. So there's there's probably 25 or 30 data points that we're collecting, and, and that is the starting point. Um, there's a section for you to drop your resume right in there, just drag and drop, drag and drop the file. Um, but for some individuals that may not have the resume yet, we know that you know, that's, that's a work in progress, sometimes lifelong in some cases. We do have a resume generation tool where 
if you can complete your profile, um, basically this generation tool will cherry pick key content and data from your profile and, and produce a, a, a two page resume. So everything really starts there. The process is probably 10 to 15 minutes. You know, a lot of it's contingent on how long did you serve? How many different MOSs did you have? You know, for me, somebody that served four years, my profile is, I'm going to zip through it a little bit quicker than somebody that maybe did 20 or 20 plus years because mm -hmm. they had so many different positions along the way. So um, just starting there is, is really the launch pad again into everything. You're going to be recommended jobs. You're going to be recommended career fairs. You're going to be considered for our placement services as well, assuming your profile aligns with those open recs. So recruitmilitary.com, it's the easiest place to start. Perfect. Um, and so many who are watching may know that our Onward to Opportunity program also helps veterans and military spouses, transitioning service members, um, get into careers and it pairs well with what you do at Recruit Military. So Chris, I know you're in the program now out of Fort Drum. Yeah. Can you tell us about your experience and, all, and everything you're going through with that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're, uh, we're partners in crime here. We love everything that O2O <laughs> does and we want to, you know, champion and, and sing it from the rooftops when and where we can. Um, you know, you guys have phenomenal certification programs where even as a veteran, you know, I was surprised I was able to take advantage of it. You know, I've, I ets about 15 years ago at this point, not to date myself. Um, but, you know, to, for, for somebody that's going through the transition right now, or even somebody that's a veteran, that, um, you know, you're naturally marketable, you have soft skills and intangibles, but um, if you want to take it a step further, make yourself just a little more marketable or stand out as a champion amongst, you know, the, the crowd, if you will, um, O2O's got phenomenal programs. So I'm, I'm particularly pursuing PMP, uh, my project management professional certification. So I've, uh, I've completed the curriculum at this point. I, I, I look at it as I've done about half the work, you know, I, I still have a lot of work ahead of me as far as preparation goes, but so much of what I do in my line of work right now, and truly, I think it's applicable to just about any profession, whether you're in IT or you're managing a team or, you know, if you're in any kind of project-based environment, um, you know, bias, you know, I, I, I think PMP is a phenomenal certification to have. So that's what I'm going for. I've got to do a little bit more prep work. I have to take some test exams and, you know, do a lot of dry runs and review flashcards. But, um, you know, I, I look at the PMP certification as being hyper important to me in particular, because, you know, everything that we're doing on the DOD side and the federal government side is there's a start, there's a middle, there's an end and a ton of work in between all of those phases. So um, I naturally do project management as it is, but I don't consider myself to be an expert of project management. So, you know, being able to lean on an, an awesome program like what you have through Syracuse and, and O2O uh, is just a natural fit for me. So everybody is, you know, you get a lot of hands-on uh, sort of guidance. You get to talk with experts, people that have taken the tests, taken these certifications, help you learn best practices. Um, so, I, yeah, it's, it's been a phenomenal experience so far, and I highly recommend anybody that is looking to kind of upskill or make yourself a little bit more marketable, spit shine that resume, put that extra layer of value on there, you know, look into O2O and the various certification programs that they have because it's a, it's a game changer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and the PMP track is definitely one of the most popular ones we have. So understand. Tricky too. Not that. easy. Not easy. I don't yeah. want to fool anybody. It's not the easiest one out there. The, the <laughs> concepts are simple, but the uh, terminology and the nuances are, are uh, intense sometimes, but in a good way. So I, I love a good challenge. So yeah, PMP is an awesome route to go. Definitely. And when you mentioned going through other programs, that made me think, what is some advice you'd give someone for networking and making themselves more marketable um, in addition to going through recruit military or programs like O2O? O. Yeah, um, you know, I'd say low hanging fruit is, is always making sure that you're, you're working LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, yeah. and I know that for many that might be watching that are active duty right now, maybe they're not transitioning right at this moment, but will be in the near future and they've heard about LinkedIn, but they're not really 100% sure what it is, um, I highly recommend getting into LinkedIn, creating your profile there and, and networking via that platform because there are no geographic boundaries. You can identify professionals in very particular um, industries or you know, if, if you really wanted to 
yeah, I'm going to throw out a random example. If you really wanted to work mm -hmm. for Amazon, you know, and you're going back to, you know, Dallas, Texas, you know, uh, you can you can use LinkedIn to identify recruiting teams for Amazon in Dallas, Texas, if that if that was, you know, the route that you were going to take. So um, I highly recommend using it and not being passive with it either. You know, you can sit there and you can like and, uh, you know, share content, but engage, comment, you know, share mm -hmm. your perspective, share your experiences. LinkedIn is an awesome platform to kind of show your your subject matter expertise in some cases. So uh, if you think for a second that you're going to put in a job application and that recruiter or that hiring manager is not going to look for you on LinkedIn, you're wrong. They, that's one of the first things that they'll do. So I yeah. would say that's probably the easiest thing to throw out there to recommend as far as networking goes. And then don't just be open-minded to saying yes as often as you can when there's a networking opportunity. There's a lot of local, whether it's veteran-centric or just professional networking opportunities, you know, happy hours on a given Wednesday, go, you know, break bread or grab a drink with, uh, with a perfect stranger that you never know where that social capital might lead you, you know, just expand your network. So LinkedIn and local networking opportunities, I strongly recommend for anybody. Yeah, and definitely don't be afraid to throw yourself out there and introduce yeah. yourself to new yeah. people. You got to be vulnerable. Um, it's a little uncomfortable sometimes, but it's like doing push-ups. The only way to get better at push-ups is <laughs> more push-ups. So get out there. I, I was terrified of, you know, speaking in front of a crowd before I came to work at this company, but you don't have a choice sometimes. So um, yeah, just put yourself out there. there. There's there's no harm. No, Nothing bad will come as a result. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today about Recruit Military. And I think you mentioned earlier the best place to learn more is at recruitmilitary.com. Yeah, that's right. Recruitmilitary.com. Start your professional profile right there and we will be in touch. You know, we will get a hold of you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Vanessa. I really appreciate you having me on.